Hello, everybody, and welcome to another educational video. This time we are looking at uh, Sicily, a very small section for the WSET Level 3. We do have a, a more advanced version of this, which is suitable for Level 4 and above. Uh, please check out the link in the description below for the more advanced version. But on this one, we're just going to be looking at the Level 3 bits that you need to know. We are um, from West London Wine School, so my name is Jimmy Smith. I am the founder of West London Wine School, uh, also South London Wine School, both, of course, both in London in the United Kingdom. And my handle there is at Wine with Jimmy. If you'd like any comments or questions, please get in touch. Uh, Streatham Wine House is my uh, um, other business, which is a lovely, brilliant little wine bar down in South London as well. Um, there's some more information at the bottom of the screen. So to begin with, um, now you are not required to know for the level three production numbers for Sicily, but to give you some background, Sicily is the largest area under vine in Italy with just over 100,000 hectares, which makes it fairly sizable. But it is only fourth in total production in 2018 um, behind Emilia Romana, Puglia and Veneto. Um, Veneto for you guys would be all about things like Pinot Grigio, Merlot, and then the classic wines of Suave and Valpolicella. So therefore, Sicily uh, is a big player, um, but a lot of it is uh, is tends to be quite bulk, uh, certainly through history. Uh, what we call Vino de Taglio, bulk wine, was produced quite sizably here. Um, but there has been a big move of quality in the last 30 or 40 years, which we'll focus on a few of the areas. So um, the need to knows for you is that uh, there's only really a few. Now, um, Italy does have one DOCG, but you are not required to know it. That is the little purple area, which is down around Ragusa and Vittoria. That's Cerasuelo di Vittoria. Um, the ones you are required to know is the very famous DOC of to the northeast of the island, and then the whole encompassing Sic uh, Sicily, which is Sicilia or Sicilia DOC, and then the Indicazioni Geografica Tipica, IGT, Ter de Sicilia. So the Ter de Sicilia is uh, um, the, the slightly more catchment one, which allows for more varietals. So um, both of those, therefore, are around the whole, uh, whole area of Sicily. Um, but first up, the most important is Etna. So Etna is, of course, named after Monte Etna or Mount Etna, which is uh, Europe's largest active volcano, stretching for over 3,000 meters in the northeast of the island. Uh, it is a constantly active volcano. So it has erupted significantly about 300 times in the last 500 years. Um, the last real big one was uh, December the 24th, at Christmas Eve 2018. Um, so there are many eruptions. Uh, and of course, this means that the soils based around the whole of uh, Mount Etna are volcanic in origin. Um, now, the vineyard area is not large. It's just under 1,000 hectares, and it's about two-thirds red and about one-third white. You'll know that doesn't add up to, to 100. That's because there is also rosato, and a little bit of um, sparkling, a bit of frizzante produced down here as well. Um, you are not required to know about the name of the grape variety for the white, but you are required to know that um, quite fresh whites are made um, that will have lees contact, that can have malolactic, and in fact that's very common, and some oak. Uh, and they are, are almost burgundian in their freshness and roundness. Uh, so that is Etna Bianco whites. So, yes, um, you are required to know, though, that Etna DOC is more famous for its red, or in Italian, Rosso. So, Etna Rosso DOC. Okay, there are higher levels of this, uh, as there are for the whites, but you are just required to know at this point. The key grape variety for, um, key, key grape variety is for Etna Rosso, uh, Narello Mascalesi and Narello Cappuccio. Uh, and Mascalese is your major varietal, making up um, most of the blends, often around 90 to 100%. Um, 
Cappuccio is often the slightly more spicier style, which is just used for a little bit of blending. The styles of Etna Rosso tend to be quite aromatic, quite fragrant, with a huge uh, volcanic acidity behind them. Nice sort of drying rustic tannins uh, as well from these volcanic based soils. Uh, red fruits tend to dominate here. So cherries and strawberries, it's often been called in the past the Pinot Noir uh, of Italy. And in fact, some people call it the Barolo of Italy. So it, for me, it actually, you can see on the smells and the aromas is a bit of a combination of those two. So think Pinot Noir, think um, think Nebbiolo. Uh, it can be really savoury and herbaceous. Think sage, basil, uh, bay leaf are very common on the reds uh, and that's quite classic. And then it develops kind of a, a, a feral sort of mushroomy, um, souffle undergrowth forest floor character with age, quite like Nebbiolo and Pinot Noir does as well. So these are quite delicious wines, quite elegant but complex at the same time. And then down in the southeast, now I put this up just because uh, you are required to know about one major black local grape variety here, which is mainly found down here, but it will be grown across the whole island, incorporated into Sicilia DOC or IGT Terre de Sicilia. Uh, and this grape variety is the Nero Davola grape variety, um, famous around Noto. Syracuse, the famous Greek city, and Eloro. Um, so they're DOCs. You are not required to know these for your certificate, but you are required to know about the great Nero Davola, which is famed down in this area. So Nero Davola, there it's a picture of big, big black grapes, full of skin content, um, lots of color, uh, and very fleshy. Lots of production can be made from these. Um, so the dominant grape variety in IGT Terre de Sicilia and Sicilia DOC, as I just mentioned, produces medium to full bodied styles of wines with good, good power behind them, um, softened tannins, rounded tannins, and then quite soft acids. They can be quite light um, to quite powerful and complex with oak. Um, normally they're quite dark, blackberry, blueberry, with a bit of spice and licorice behind them. Um, and they're quite well loved because they're actually quite reminiscent of, say, an Argentine Malbec with its softening tannins, softening acids, but lots of rich, dark character. So quite well loved styles, the Nero Davola variety. Other great varieties, uh, just to mention, as uh, there is a byline in your textbooks about this. International varieties which are gaining importance in Sicily. So you'll find some Chardonnay being grown. Um, most success of this is over in the western islands, uh, sorry, west of the island. Uh, Planeta, for instance, makes quite rich Chardonnays. Uh, often quite ripe, quite pineapple laden, tropical, and we'll often see some oak as well. And there's been some quite good Syrah been made and often blended with Nero Davola in the IGT and DOC Sicilia categories. Um, does tend to be quite a forward style, the Sierra, but um, they are showing probably the most promise out of those two varietals. Uh, Sicily is well suited to the Sierra due to its Mediterranean climate and its very dry conditions, uh, which is uh, due to the, the wind that comes from North Africa, the Sirocco wind. Okay, so really that is uh, uh, it, all you need to know. It's only about half a page in your, uh, in your textbook, so very, very minimal amounts. Um, but uh, just a little presentation there so you understand it. Uh, if you have any comments, please get in touch at Wine with Jimmy, um, at West London Wine, South London Wine and Streatham Wine House. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've learned something and we'll see you again very soon. Cheers. Goodbye.